Hello! In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the automate feature of Fusion 360 to come up with a bracket like this really quickly. This is not generative design, it's something that happens on your computer, and it's a super fast way to make something like a bracket that just needs to hold some things together. So if you look at this one that I made, uh, really I only needed it to hold in place two different circuit boards. And, uh, and then there's some holes here so that it could be the bracket could be mounted to a wall or whatever. And the whole idea is that these circuit boards, you know, it's kind of hard to find the standoffs sometimes to find the right fasteners and so on. And I showed in another video that uh, what I've got, what I've kind of gotten to and what I like doing now is to 3D print a bracket like this with fasteners built in, with nuts built in to add uh, threaded holes, and then just have a three millimeter screw come down and hold the uh, circuit board in place. So you can see here that there are actually nuts embedded in here and what will happen is the 3D printer will get to this layer height, it'll drop a nut in and then allow it to print the rest of the way. You can see the previous video I made to understand how that works. So uh, what I'm going to show you in this video is just how I got here and how the automate function works. So let me, uh, rather than kind of walk you through the whole process, which could take half an hour, I think I'm just going to sort of step through uh, the timeline so that you can see each of the steps that I did. So the first thing I did was made a component called bracket. I think anytime you're uh, starting a new design, it makes sense to create a new component. Typically any design that is going to involve more than one part should have a separate component for each one. And I knew at some point that this would have components for the nuts, for example, and for the circuit boards. So I created a sketch inside that component called points. And what this looks like is um, essentially a map of my circuit boards. You can see that there's um, a dotted outline for each of the boards. So I've got a rectangle here and a rectangle here that represents each of the circuit boards. And then for each circuit board, I added a point to show where the mounting holes will go. So this circuit board has three holes, this one has four, and there's a very particular arrangement of them. Everything in the sketch is black, meaning that everything is fully constrained. I've got uh, constraints and dimensions everywhere so that everything is laid out just like I need it. Uh, in the next step, I actually made a new sketch called uh, standoff here, and this is actually everything I would need to know to be able to make the standoff for the board. So this includes the out the kind of outer side of it, the outer size of this uh, of this part, um, and a kind of standoff dimension, and then the actual hole in the center and the space that's going to be left for the nut inside. Again, you can see this in the other video that I made. So here I extruded just the kind of thickness essentially of the bracket it actually gets uh yeah that's the thickness of the bracket uh i'll go to the next extrusion which is that uh inner circle so this is the standoff if i look at the distance from here to here for example you can see down in the lower right that's three millimeters so that's how much space there is between the bottom of the circuit board and the bracket this is the standoff uh, this keeps me from having to find a standoff in a, you know, a drawer somewhere. This is actually just 3D printed into the bracket. And the last thing I do, you can't see the extrusion here or what happened, but I did an extrusion in the middle for the nut. Again, I show this in the other video, but you can see here that there's a space now where the nut will get placed uh, when the 3D printer gets up to this height. What did I do next? Well, uh, if you look in the timeline, you can see there's actually a bunch of things that happen as a group. And it's a lot of move and copy paste bodies. So what I did was once I had once I had one of those bodies made, I copied it to each one of those uh, sketch points that I had made. So you can see what this looks like. I will uh, select this body here. It's body one. So I'll just click body one, hit move, make sure that it says create copy, and then I can use point to point as the way that I'm going to move it. So I can say uh, copy it. Oh, sometimes that create copy gets unchecked. So copy it from this point uh, to this target point on the sketch and it will place it right where I, where I had it. Now, if I ever decided uh, that the, the sketch was a little bit off and this should be actually 15 millimeters over, all I'd have to do is just double click here, change the number for the uh, dimension and everything will catch up, right? All of those copies and pastes will, will move where they're supposed to according to where those points were. I like this method of creating a sketch that just has the points and then using those as references later to move these bodies seem to work well in this case. 
the next thing I did was basically just uh, come up with a sketch for the, that center part where there are two holes here for uh, fasteners. I didn't base that on any real dimensions for um, fasteners, but you get the idea. I've extruded these circles up uh, the thickness of the bracket. You can see from the front that they're all, everything's the same height here. And then what I did was uh, added some holes. So I've got a uh, countersunk hole here and one here. The next step now is really to just do the automate. And I'll, I'll just go forward in the timeline, but I want to show you how automate works. I'll click the automate modeling, automated modeling here, and then it asks me which faces I want to connect. So, you know, this is where this, this tool comes in super handy. That bracket may look really sophisticated and kind of overkill, but uh, all I really care about is getting all of these things to be connected in a way that is kind of efficient, maybe doesn't use a whole lot of plastic, and is going to hold up. It doesn't take into account any uh, kind of stress or um, the way that it's going to be manufactured or any of these other things that generative design does, but it allows me to create a form really quickly. And even though that, you know, the, the bracket looks really like it came from the future or an H.I. Geiger, Geiger drawing, uh, it's actually um, just kind of the quickest and easiest way to do it. So I, I don't have any bodies to avoid, but if there was some, maybe some part in here that had to not have um, the bracket interfere with it, I could click there. And then I'll just hit generate shapes. And this typically takes a while. And what it'll do is come up with different alternatives and you can accept one and it will create a T-splines body or a sculpt body uh, for whatever, whatever alternative you chose. So I've skipped ahead about a minute and you can see what's happening. It actually shows you it generating the forms live. They're starting to appear uh, here, but they're not quite complete. You can see as it evolves, it actually shows you this preview in the main window. Um, this one's almost complete and it's essentially getting better, right? It's, it's less material than the previous ones. Uh, we can see some other alternatives. This one's not quite finished, Oh no, that one is finished because there's a check mark here. And what you can do is drag over and say, I want either more or less material. So on this one, I could kind of come this way and you'll see that it gets more spare. Something like this is great because, you know, the minimum amount of material is going to work fine. I don't really have to worry about any stress on these things. It's really just to hold up some lightweight circuit boards. So at this point, I'd hit OK. I'm going to cancel, though, because I just want you to see what happened in the one that I did previously. Uh, it created, again, it created using automated modeling a, uh, a body. Uh, and it kind of goes through three steps to do that. It creates a sculpt body afterward, and then uh, it does some kind of combine. So let's look at it. There it is. Uh, so at this point, I've got all of my uh, bodies that I created, and then I've got this separate one that it just made. For whatever reason, it decided... Oh, I guess because the nut was there. Okay, so... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened, but somehow it sort of didn't do the same here that it did with the others. And that's okay. I'll just, um, the next step I did was actually to kind of resolve that. And again, this is not anything that I care about aesthetically. It really was just to make a bracket that will work. So the next step that I took was, uh, because there's sort of like an overlap here and I just wanted a flat space like this, you know, kind of a shelf at three millimeters from the top. I don't have that three millimeters here. So all I did was, uh, if you look at the section analysis, you can see I just basically took this face here and extruded it up. So let's see what that looks like. There it is. And I thought, well, I'm not really done because these ledges aren't helpful either. So uh, I think the next step that I took was to just do a split body using that same uh, face here and it actually kind of chopped around here chopped in a couple other little places that were high so anything that was higher than it should have been it kind of broke those out into other bodies and the next few steps were just removing using the uh, right click here and choosing remove I removed each of those um, extra bodies that I didn't need so you'll see all those little bits that were high disappeared so again, that split was taking this face, choosing split body, and just having it go across the whole thing and kind of trim anything that seemed to be sticking up. Okay, uh, the next step was, uh, let's get the section analysis off. The next step was to create a construction plane in the middle of this bracket. Um, ignoring all these other bodies and just the middle of this bracket. And the reason for that was 
if I look at this from the side, I could 3D print this and it would be okay. But uh, there's, you know, this part came down extra for some reason. That wasn't something I wanted. And also, there's, you know, these are essentially overhangs. As a 3D printer tries to print these kind of bridges, it'll end up kind of either looking messy or it could even cause the print to fail. So my thought was, since it seems to have distributed that, uh, you know, it, it seems to be symmetrical, right? The the top is curved as the bottom is curved. I thought if I split it right down the middle and uh, just make it a solid kind of body that doesn't have so much fanciness to it, that that would work. So I created that construction plane and the next thing I did was uh, actually do a split body. So now I've got a body on the bottom and one on the top. There we go. So I'm going to keep this one and I don't care about this bottom one which is here. So you may be able to tell what I was going to do next. I basically just extruded this downward and you can see what that looks like here. So now I've got a flat bottom. It's still the same thickness that it was. It's just that it avoids a lot of the overhangs. There could still be some in here. And also, uh, you know, there, at any point in here, I could decide that there's something superfluous, like I don't want this little bump here. It's sticking out for no reason. I can always go back to where it made this, the organic form, the sculpt mode, sculpt body. I can click that point or uh, a face or an edge or a ring of edges. Uh, let me just click that point to show you if I hit edit form and just kind of uh, move it in, when I hit OK, uh, it, it has kind of adjusted that body when I hit finish form. And, you know, I've got a, a different shape. What you will see are that there are some parts when in automated modeling that team seem totally superfluous. There was like a finger out here that I that I went back in and just removed just by uh, removing faces and then using fill fill um, hole. So anything that you might do with a T splines body, you can still do by going back and editing the bracket here. So that's it. That's the whole bracket at this point. Uh, I really, you know, when I when I did this extrude of the bottom, I chose to join. You can see here. Uh, join was the operation so it essentially joined all it joined the lower half that I just extruded it with the top half and all of these extra bodies that were separate bodies before so you can see here after the extrude we've basically got one body that we're interested in it's got all of my standoffs all of the holes I didn't go through uh, making uh, space for all of the nuts I don't think I'm not sure but in any case um, it, it should look like this everywhere I did so when I copied and pasted them, they included uh, these recesses for the nuts. Um, I think the last couple things I did were just to, to make sure it would work. Right? I made a circuit board in Eagle that had the right dimensions. Uh, not in Eagle, but in the electronics workspace of Fusion 360. And you can see there's one of them. The holes should line up. And then here's the second one that I imported from the electronics workspace. And, um, and there's the second one. So this is sort of what it would look like, right? And then finally, I think uh, I just inserted from McMaster Car the stainless steel nut that would go in there just to see it work. And the last couple steps are putting it in place. So if you look at the section analysis, you can see here there's a threaded hole. The, the bolt would come down and hold the circuit board right here onto the bracket. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I could go through the whole process, but I felt like uh, maybe just showing you the um, the step-by-step -step of how it's done would be enough. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.